Well, good morning, good afternoon, and good evening, folks, wherever you're joining us from today. Welcome to today's webinar, Assesses Building HVAC Design for ASHRAE 55 Compliance. I'm Grant Holmes, your host for today. Before we get started, a few housekeeping items. First of all, we will be recording this webinar, and it'll be available to you for future reference on our YouTube channel, as well as the Simulation Hub website. Hello and welcome to our webinar, again, on ASHRAE Standard 55. Today, we have a jam-packed agenda in store for you, so this is going to be fun. I am pleased to announce our expert speakers today, Mr. Anthony Amadio and Mr. Praveen Kumar. Tony Amadio PE is the owner and mechanical design engineer for his firm, PE Load Calcs LLC. He has over 15 years of engineering design experience in thermal sciences, fluid mechanics, thermodynamics, heat transfer, and thermal structural infinite element analysis, and over 10 years of experience in residential and small commercial HVAC design. While living in Illinois, Tony taught three semesters of college at DuPage Community College in Glen Ellen. The curriculum was HVAC load calculations, duct designs, and airflow balancing, and still performs individual training for new HVAC designers. Tony holds a bachelor's and master's in mechanical engineering and holds a professional engineer license, I think now in 21 states. And Praveen is the product manager of Simulation Hub, a flagship CFD platform of CC Tech. Praveen has deep experience converting real-world problems into accurate computational problems. He has been instrumental in conceptualizing the building simulation apps for Simulation Hub team. With more than 13 years of strong domain experience in CFD, he has also developed flavor for user experience. Praveen holds a master's, I'm sorry, bachelor's degree in mechanical engineering and postgraduate DACFD. Almost promoted you there, Praveen. Here's an overview of today. <clears throat> We're going to start with an overview of ASHRAE Standard 55, exploring what it is and why it's essential. And then after that, we're going to dive into the topic of assessing thermal comfort using ASHRAE Standard 55. This section will cover various techniques and methods that can be used to check if the proposed mechanical design is in compliance with ASHRAE Standard 55. Next, we'll discuss the application of autonomous HVAC, CFD, an existing technology revolutionizing the HVAC industry. And we're going to explore its features and potential impact. And then we'll present some real world case studies of how autonomous HVAC CFD applications can help you optimize your HVAC design and assesses for ASHRAE 55 compliance. <clears throat> Excuse me, lastly, We'll have a Q&A session where you can ask our experts questions about, <clears throat> here we go, ASHRAE 55, assessing thermal comfort, autonomous HVAC CFD, or anything related to the HVAC industry. If you have a burning question during the presentation, feel free to toss them in the Q&A box, which should be at the bottom of your Zoom screen right there in the middle. Just click on that and we'll get to those during the Q&A session. I'd like to hand the mic to Tony, our HVAC expert. Tony, can you tell us what ASHRAE Standard 55 is? and why this standard is important to the HVAC industry. Tony? Yes, sir. Thank you, Grant. Hey, thank you guys for joining. Um, oh, next slide. And a little visual help there. Um, so uh, basically what ASHRAE Standard 55 is, it's a specification uh, of a combination of indoor thermal environmental factors. We're talking air temperature, relative humidity, average airspeed, operative temperature, similar to a mean radiant temperature. And it's also a combination of personal factors, what you're wearing, what you're doing, um, that's gonna produce an ac acceptable thermal environment 
for the majority of folks in the occupied space. Uh, they say 80 per, more than 80% is the majority. I kind of say 80% or more in case you're on the threshold. Uh, standard 55, just so you know, we're talking thermal comfort. We're not talking about non-thermal uh, factors like noise, lighting, air quality, odor, stuff like that. Now, I'll add one more thing. And this is my definition of ASHRAE standard 55 because ASHRAE is not ready for this. Don't write it down. But I'm going to say ASHRAE standard 55 on my definition is CFD verified thermal comfort. That's only, in my belief, the only accurate way um, to model a thermal environment and getting comfort with these occupants. I don't know of a better way to do it. Uh, next slide. So why use ASHRAE standard 55? That's a good question. We're all busy. We're all trying to do our jobs, but we're all trying to get better at our jobs. And, and one of the things of, of doing our job, even though we're good design engineers or uh, design professionals, we do have to know the codes. Um, ASHRAE standard 55 is referenced uh, in multiple codes, um, such as the IECC, the International Energy Conservation Code, the building... California Title 24, anyone who <clears throat> work in the, Cal Cal in the state of California. So um, these are not mandatories, okay, but it is mandatory. It is required in the ASHRAE Standard 189 and also the International Green Construction Code. That's the ICC version of the ASHRAE. So if you're going to be doing any construction related to lead buildings, Energy Star buildings, they're going to go to and say, these are the codes and standards you're going to follow, your ASHRAE Standard 189 and your IGCC, okay, that's required. It's going to be standard 55 is a requirement. And I always like to say, hey, we talk about code, but let me show you where it is. It's always good to know where it is in the code book because people talk code. Let's show you where it's at. Well, here's the 2021 IGCC, forgive me, International Green Construction Code. Um, the building shall be designed in compliance with the ASHRAE standard 55. There it is. And then kind of showing you the same thing with the ASHRAE as well on the 189. On the next slide, yeah, the same thing right there. The building shall be designed in compliance with ASHRAE standard 55. Trust me, this is really good to know. It's always, I've always impressed my clients when, you know, here's codes that they didn't know about. And then it's, people are on board for this. Um, and then the other reason it, why we want to do this is, um, you know, we do want to be bit better engineers. Um, you know, we also want to get ahead of the competition. Not a lot of folks are applying the standard 55, you know, but, you know, now's the time to get going on it, get ahead with it, and then basically blow your competition. Okay. I, I got to sell my services. Okay. I also have to have my sales pitch. And this is one of your sales pitches. I do HVAC designs and air distribution designs to the standard 55. And, and let me tell you, um, for, I, I've done many residential, I've done many small commercial and even large commercial. And, and trust me, you will get callbacks. You will get feedback from other HVAC companies or builders or architects, whoever hired me, when the big boss in the office is is not comfortable or getting a cold draft same thing with the you know someone in the the, the parents of the master bedroom of a large home you know you'll get those calls and then you got to deal with that you got to handle that um you got to figure out what's wrong that's a lot of time unpaid time that you got to deal with so when you're do when you get ahead of the game it's going to get easier you're going to be more efficient you're going to have less complaints and you're going to have more time to do better designs. And because this is going to be easy, we've got a very easy software for you. You know, this will be going really fast. You're going to really enjoy using the software. Another reason why you want to do this um, is, um, it, it, well, look at what we have today. Maybe some of you are familiar with this, the hand count method of the Air Diffusion Performance Index, or the ADPI, where we look at the isothermal throw at 50 feet <clears> per 
and we look at the size of the room, the characteristic length. This is how I've been, you know, placing my diffusers and looking at the size of diffusers. You know, I haven't done this on every job, but on most jobs, it does take some time. It does take looking at these tables. Um, by the way, these tables are from the 1970s. Honestly, they're obsolete. Has nothing to do with the person and where they're located. It's based on laboratory experiments with nine to ten foot ceiling heights. Although they say you could, it's good for up to twelve foot ceiling heights. It's again, it's isothermal throw, um, symmetrical diffuser locations. Um, you know, it doesn't consider anything about return locations. People will say, well, hey, you know, what if your returns over here or there? How does it impact? You know, you kind of got to say, well, I don't think it's going to impact much or oh, it may be short circuiting here, but we never really had that information. We don't get that from these tables that you're looking at here. And then matching up the type of grills with these ADPI charts in that upper right corner, it, you know, the, the terminologies they use may not be what the manufacturers give you. So you got to, you know, line things up. And, you know, are these ADPI, you know, tables, are, are they standard 50? Five compliant the answers. No, it's not. Um, but do they accurately predict, you know, uh, thermal comfort? We're going to find out. Um, uh, next slide. So just a little refresh uh, on, on this old school obsolete method, the comfort criteria, um, isothermal throw at 50 feet per minute divided by the characteristic length. You know, here's an example of a our, our typical two foot by two foot ceiling diffuser. Um, what's the CFM in this 10 foot by 10 foot office? Real simple problem. Many problems aren't like this. That's why, what do we do with big, you know, rooms with multiple diffusers and how are we going to lay these out? Um, but the characteristic length, just as a refresh, is the nearest distance to the wall, okay? And then we, we know what the isothermal throw is. And then you could look at the manufacturer specs and you could see, well, okay, at 100 CFM, at 80 CFM, what is my throw? Well, what's my throw if it's smaller CFM? Sometimes you're stuck with, with the clients who want to fill that grid with a ceiling diffuser. So we'll get right into that. And, and this is, for, for example, our ADPI table from the ASHRAE handbooks. Um, this is from the applications on Chapter 58. Um, so you can see there's many different types of supply uh, grills. Again, the terminology may not be the same from what you're getting from your manufacturer or from the specs that you're using, Titus, Metalair, Price, whoever it is you're using, you would have to kind of know what the building load per square foot is for cooling, for heating. Older tables didn't have things for heating. The newer tables do. Um, but they would say, hey, look, you know, if you know your throw, this would come from the manufacturer table um, based on that CFM. You know, if you were in this range, you would have an acceptable ADPI. You should have thermal comfort. Really? Is that true? You know, what if the person isn't sitting in the center of the room? What if he's more towards the corner? Um, what if the ceiling diffuser is not centered? Oftentimes, the people with the lights get there first, you know. Um, uh, what about low airflows? Well, we can have low airflow rooms totally. When you have a room that's totally adiabatic, you've got uh, conditioned rooms above you, beside you, below you, and it's just one person in a and it's a reading room. We're talking thirty to fifty CFM. It could be really small. You know, how's this ADPI table going to help me um, for, for predicting comfort of an occupant? And we're going to see more. Back to you, Grant. Sorry. <laughs> Are we there? I'm waiting on the microphone to come back to me here. I can hear you. Well, there we go. At least somebody can hear me, right? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Tony, for all that. We uh, really appreciate you explaining the uh, ASHRAE Standard 55 and how to assess thermal comfort using it. And your insights have been very informative, although uh, I didn't understand most of it. I'll uh, go look at my diffusers here right after lunch. Reminding you all that are attending to please use the Q&A box for any HVAC-related questions especially as they might relate to today's topic. Now let's welcome Praveen to the show who will shed light on the autonomous HVAC CFD and how it can ease the work of HVAC designers for compliance. Praveen, over to you. Sure. Uh, thanks, Grant. And thanks, Tony. You made my job very easy. Uh, you have set the context for the audience, right? 
so now the question is like how to check the compliance with ASHRAE 55 standard. So ASHRAE 55 has <coughs> provided uh, guidelines or specified certain parameters and certain criteria so that you can cross check and verify if your predicted mean vote or four set of local thermal discomfort parameters falls in that specified range or recommended range, you can, uh, you know, you can conclude or you can say it, it is in compliance with the ASHRAE 55 standard. So for example, predicted mean vote has a range like if it is uh, in between minus 0.5 to plus 0.5, and similarly, for radial thermal, uh, radial temperature asymmetry, vertical air temperature difference that is between the head and foot level difference of uh, air temperature, <coughs> the flow surface temperature and the draft. So all uh, has some guidelines and ranges specified. But one thing we should notice, like to calculate this, what we need is the four uh, basic in, uh, indoor environmental factors. Uh, that is uh, the relative humidity, air velocity, temperature, and mean radiant temperature. So not only for this ASHRAE 55, but even for other standards, we have a lot of parameters that covers both thermal comfort as well as indoor air quality. So the effective draft temperatures, ADPI, and indoor air quality, air change effectiveness. So all these parameters are calculated based on these four or five basic uh, uh, you know, values. So these factors, how we can extract this. Once this is done, then we can derive all the factors that are specified, all the parameters specified in the standards. So how do you extract or assess these, uh, these, these basic factors? So you have two options. One is the physical measurement and the other one is numerical simulations or CFD simulations. So in physical measurements, uh, you install sensors and then there are globe thermometers or different devices to measure different parameters. Like for example, globe thermometer is used for measuring the mean radiant temperature. So what are the pros and cons of uh, this method? Uh, the pros, of course, you are able to predict the comfort on the real setup, but that is the catch. Like, you know, you will be able to do it only after the construction and installation is done right that will be too late uh, by the time you are realizing they need some design modifications by the time uh, it, it's 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 too late so uh, at this stage the design modifications are costly and uh, even even to uh, respond to the complaints you have very limited flow insights you know to uh, really troubleshoot the problem and get to the root cause of the issue what is causing that discomfort to the occupants so these are the drawbacks on the other hand, if I see CFD simulations, you can predict the comfort at well at the design stage itself. Okay, so uh, you get a, a detailed flow insights throughout the space. It's like you know infinite amount of sensors installed in your condition space, and you get the complete picture uh, right at the design stage. So you can uh, simulate what if scenarios like. You can play with different design configurations, can move the supply and return uh, locations, play with the CFM, play with the, uh, uh, the system, whether it is a VAV or CAV. So all those sort of things, you can simulate it at the design stage. Uh, what's the drawback? The conventional CFD uh, simulation you know, requires a sort of uh, knowledge or expertise in that field to get some meaningful outs, like results out of it. So you need to be a CFD expert to use the CFD uh, softwares, conventional CFD softwares. And uh, the resources required uh, for uh, performing those heavy, computationally heavy simulations are you know, quite demanding. So you need a HPC setup in-house to perform these simulations. So hold on to that. So with that, uh, vision. We what what simulation of has developed is <laughs> what if we bring a technology that will uh, you know what is whatever is stopping this uh, uh, the HVAC designer community to use the CFD simulations. So we want to remove that hurdle. So simulation of developed a technology a platform using which the HVAC designers they themselves will be able to simulate their condition space and evaluate the uh, ASHRAE 55 compliance, for example. 
So we developed autonomous HVAC CFD. So this is an uh, upfront CFD app tailor-made for HVAC designers uh, for assessing their uh, proposed designs uh, at the design stage for thermal comfort and indoor air quality. So it is built based on uh, powered by Autodesk Forge for uh, 3D visualizations, AWS Amazon Web Services for uh, performing the CFD simulations, and OpenFoam is our uh, CFD solver. So how it works, uh, it takes four set of inputs uh, related to the building. So the design inputs are architectural design, the uh, building layout, and the orientation of the buildings, and the enclosure design, the building envelope components like walls, roofs, what are the material properties? So here you are able to specify the U values and uh, the thermal properties uh, of the walls and glass. And the third input is the interior design, uh, where you place the occupant layout, specify what is the activity of uh, occupant, what is the clothing level of occupants. So that input you can provide in this uh, step. And the fourth input is the mechanical design. So you specify all the uh, diffuser types, location, and the, the HVAC system, how it operates, whether it is a VAV or CAV system. So once you provide these four set of inputs, the app provides you with the set of two sets of outputs, uh, something related to indoor air quality and thermal comfort. So those outputs or results are, uh, if I talk about uh, indoor air quality, the CO2 carbon dioxide uh, concentration level in the space, how it varies with the graph. And if I talk about thermal comfort, so whatever uh, the standards, actually if it by standards specified, the predicted mean vote. So that you get as a direct output. So other than the basic components, which were uh, humidity, temperature, and airflow, the velocity and radiant temperature. So, and with this, uh, we have recently added the compliance report. So now uh, you do not, have to go through all the CFD uh, simulation results. You can directly uh, get a consolidated uh, report. So you get all the tables which specify how many people or how many how much percentage of people in a space is uh, you know satisfied with the criteria specified in the ASHRAE 55. So these table will tell you like for example this is the predicted mean mode table and this is the local thermal discomfort tables. And this is this specifies the overall average values of temperature, RH, and operative temperature, and velocities, etc. So you get this uh, nice report directly, and uh, that those reports help you to find the statistics like how many people. But if you want to uh, investigate further to understand which which occupants or which zone is mostly falling under the non-compliance uh, behavior. So they, we have a tool uh, using which you can, in, in the viewer, you can view which occupants are, you know, marked as non-compliant. And if you mouse over the values of local thermal discomfort are displayed. So you can, you know, uh, uh, investigate and uh, uh, troubleshoot it to the root cause. Like this, this particular draft rating is creating the trouble for this particular occupant. So we have provided, you know, further uh, post-processing tools like flow lines and uh, <laughs> temperature velocity contours to investigate further and uh, understand, you know, uh, uh, why there is a draft rating, okay? Here, uh, flow lines show there is a direct cold draft falling on the occupant. So that's why the draft rate is uh, going above the unacceptable range, uh, like above 20%. And here you can <laughs> see the colors indicates the values of uh, temperature. Uh, this is a displacement uh, ventilation system where the temperature is like, uh, uh, it, it varies from the bottom till the top. So, okay. So we talked about uh, what is autonomous HVAC CFD and uh, how it works in the background and what are the outputs it produces. Now, why autonomous HVAC CFD? So I'll tell you two reasons. One is it is autonomous. Uh, you don't need any, uh, CFD knowledge to use the software and produce uh, the results, required results. So uh, it has, <laughs> the algorithm has all the intelligence to pick uh, the required setup and uh, parameters for uh, automating the complete CFD process, right from cat cleanup, meshing, and solving. 
So all the second reason is all these processes happen in, on the cloud platform. So no uh, local machine is consumed. Your, uh, you can access it from laptop and start the simulations and it will run on the cloud platform. So you can run n number of uh, uh, designs parallelly. So you can uh, run the projects in parallel mode. Okay. So another reason is uh, the app is well validated and benchmarked with the experimental studies. So one of such study I have presented here. So this is a study conducted at uh, the University of California uh, and uh, where there is a single occupant and uh, you know there is a uh, displacement ventilation in place. So uh, we simulated the same using our app and we are able to observe a very close pattern uh, of temperature profile and the CO2 profile. We are uh, about 90, uh, about 90 percentage accurate with compa in comparison to the experimental results. So an, an, in a, another study, uh, we ourselves conducted this uh, study at our uh, office conference room, which is in Pune, India. And we installed uh, certain sensors and uh, we simulated the same environment using the AHC app. And we observed, uh, we are able to predict 95 and above accurate in accuracy in the temperature for temperature. And uh, we are in the range of 90 to 95 in RH, and we are in the 85 to 90 in the range for the CO2 concentration. So here is the uh, app in action. So because this is a web application, you can uh, log in, open your browser, log in, and uh, you can see the dashboard uh, where you can access all the projects. So you can click on create project, give a proper name to the project and description. Here you select the building template. Uh, so this video is on the office template and here you specify certain values related to the floor to ceiling height. You are selecting uh, the material properties from the library for each component and you specify the site location. So the app automatically fetches the outdoor environmental conditions like temperature and RH and design day. All those informations are uh, fetched directly from the nearest weather station, which is displayed uh, based on the site location you specified for. So once done, here you see the sketcher where you set the building orientation. And using the sketcher tools, you can uh, start sketching out the building layout. So uh, using walls and you can place the windows and thermostats, doors, all those sort of uh, the building layouts to complete the uh, floor plan. And here we provide a, a library of BIM components uh, for the seating layouts. So because we selected the office template, uh, you see all the seating layouts related to the office, like conference room, meeting room, uh, reception and those sort of things. So you can uh, pick them and place it, drag it and arrange it to as per your uh, uh, intended uh, seating arrangement. So once that is done, then you move on to the next stage, which is specifying the airside system. So uh, you can specify whether it is a ductless or a ducted system and specify, start with uh, the infiltration. And here again, we have a library of uh, components uh, for the diffusers and return grills. And uh, you can pick and drag as per your uh, mechanical design. And here the thing is like, uh, you can have add multiple ASI systems and to compare, you know, uh, you can have comparison between a spire plague or soil phase. So you have multiple designs in your mind. So you want to try out all those things and see the response, uh, which, which one performs much better in terms of compliance with the ASHRAE 55 standard or uh, other standards. So you can create multiple ASHRAE systems and move on to the design configurations where you specify whether your system is a CAV system or VAV system. And you can also set uh, multi-zone or single zones. So you can arrange these spaces to provide zoning and set the thermostat uh, you know, to the space which is governing the system. So the design configuration is done. Then moving on to the scenario stage where uh, you specify what is your uh, occupancy level and uh, what is the weather scenario for which you want to simulate it for? So, for example, you can uh, pick a design, a design cooling day, 
or uh, heating uh, day. So you can have multiple uh, scenarios. You can simulate it for a summer peak load or design load or extreme load and same for winter. So once you're done, then you can start uh, the simulations uh, just by clicking submit and the simulations are on uh, running on the cloud. So you can monitor the progress and uh, the simulations are running on the cloud. Uh, no local machines are consumed. So this approximately takes two to three hours depending on the size of the problem project. So once it is done, then you get an email notification and you can come back and continue from right where, like right where you um, left. And uh, here in the viewer, in the browser, uh, you can access all the results, right from airflow, draft rating, and ventilation effectiveness, et cetera. So here uh, we have inter we introduced an interesting way to uh, understand the thermal sensation of the occupants using emojis, so thermal emojis, I would say. So you can map it with the Fanger's uh, seven scale model, uh, right from uh, based on the PMV values only. And uh, you can map it and understand whether the occupants are uh, feeling hot or cold, or slightly warm or slightly cool, or are they in comfort? So there are other tools uh, like surface contours uh, to investigate further and understand uh, where which portion of the mannequin is feeling cold or hot. Such kind of uh, information you can get. And you can use flow lines to understand the flow path uh, or identify any short circuits from supply to return. And here, what you're seeing is a CO2 concentration cloud to identify which portion has an unhealthy or a unacceptable concentration level. And this graph shows the variation of CO2 along with the time and other tools like contour plots and cut sections to identify the hot, hot pockets and cold pockets in the space. And there are a lot of variables like mean age of air. So we'll see in details how they have been used uh, in the case studies, uh, when I jump to the case study section, I'll explain how to interpret, use this uh, results and interpret, uh, understand the problem. Okay. So the next thing is uh, you can uh, view the quantitative results like ADPI and air change effectiveness. And also uh, you can uh, download the uh, compliance report. So the compliance report has all the detailed tables, which shows, uh, you know, you're comparing uh, two different designs and how much percentage with the green indicates a minimum 50 percentage has passed of occupants has passed the criteria specified in ASTU purify standard. So you have the complete consolidated report for all the weather scenarios and all the design configurations you have selected. So that's it for the demo. And uh, moving on to the uh, uh, case studies. Uh, so I have three interesting case studies here today. Uh, so the first one is the conference room. So this is the you know conference room uh, taken. Uh, this is like occupying seven occupants in this uh, oval shaped uh, uh, the, the, the table, uh, conference table, meeting room. And uh, it's it's located in Florida, and uh, we are uh, experimenting with uh, two design configurations. One with the centered square plate diffuser with a higher flow rate, of 420 CFM. This is a two by two uh, square plate diffuser, and uh, the same space uh, fitted with the two uh, centered uh, square plate diffusers with uh, 210 210 CFM, uh, both on the left and the right. So uh, we got some interesting results. Uh, the first thing is both provided uh, same level of comfort, all are in green, all the occupants are in green. But the interesting thing is uh, the first design configuration, uh, it just needed the supplier temperature is at 62 Fahrenheit and to achieve this level of comfort. But the second design configuration, which you know lacks the momentum and directly drops the uh, draft directly into the uh, occupied zone. So that uh, uh, needed uh, to run at the maximum capacity, like uh, 55 Fahrenheit to achieve the same level of comfort as that of design configuration. And when I compare uh, the ADPIs, the ADPIs is slightly lower or uh, not good for the second configuration because of the, maybe the size of the diffusers maybe, and the CO2 concentration. So what, even the CO2 concentrations are higher compared to the design one. 
So what we thought of, you know, what if uh, we stick to the same two diffuser uh, pattern, but reduce the uh, size of the diffuser so that we still able to get the produce the same Ponda effect that we got in the first design configuration. So with this, uh, we tried the same design uh, with a reduced size one by one uh, diffuser. So with that, we got an increase in ADPI above 90, so which is good and uh, uh, you know good amount of reduction in the CO2 concentration, uh, which is like 1300. Still, uh, the CO2 concentration is not in the acceptable range. Uh, maybe the minimum uh, criteria required, like from the uh, taken from the ASHA 62.1, is not sufficient uh, for the uh, occupant uh, CO2 concentration to neutralize. So we need to have a 30% more or a tolerance uh, of fresh air or outdoor outdoor air to make the CO2 concentration go below 1000. So uh, that was the first case study. And the second case oh. study is a, a burger joint. Uh, again, uh, this was like 32 occupants, eight tables and four per each table. And here you can see how uh, the supply diffusers are distributed. Six supply diffusers, uh, two by two diffusers with 350 CFM each. And uh, this is the orientation and you have a large glass window on uh, the west walls, and uh, this is a 3D model generated from the two, 2D layout using the app. So the results are very interesting. Uh, the flow lines looks good. Uh, the ADPI values are above 80, no problem. Uh, the AC, the air change effectiveness is kind of slightly worrying because it's less than one. Uh, less than one is it indicates uh, the old air or uh, uh, the exhaled air kind of it's you know recirculated in the uh, space so that is evident with the help of mean age of air so the age of air uh, the higher color indicates the old air how old the air is how long it takes uh, for the air to you know kind of recirculate before it returns through the exhaust uh, so this is also you know uh, can we get the confirmation from the co2 concentration cloud as well so here you can see uh, the, the green portion is missing, uh, which indicates the green portion is the acceptable level and the empty portion is the unacceptable uh, level or poorly ventilated or unhealthy air. So what we did was uh, we moved the return locations and uh, we were able to see a lot of a very good improvement in the reduction of mean AJ and uh, the CO2 concentration uh, went to the acceptable level throughout the occupied space. So this was wonderful. And that was reflected in the air change effectiveness as well. It, it moved above one. So the return location does has the, have an impact on the ADPI, mean age of air, and CO2 concentration. So here, uh, if you remember, Tony presented a case uh, and he left out with a question, you know, so uh, this ADP tables using ADP tables. What if uh, for a lower CFM, uh, the 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 throw values are missing from the manufacturers, and how do you find the ADP and stuff like that? So what we did was uh, we simulated this case case study with three different. Uh, it was a single person office uh, space, ten by ten uh, feet. Uh, we simulated it for 100, 70, and uh, 50 CFM. And uh, here is the ADPA, the CFM, uh, how it directly impacts the ADPA level, uh, you know, below 80 or well below 80, I would say. Uh, Tony, you have uh, any views or uh, perspectives on this you would like to add? Well, oh, yeah, definitely. Uh, thank you. Well, I just wanted to mention that burger joint and there, you know, a question about the returns. You know, without CFD, you would never be able to see the impact of return location. Oh, okay. Uh, that's what's really powerful about this is those ADPI tables and the characteristic length and throw has nothing to do with return location and the literature that we would be reading in the ASHRAE handbook that return location doesn't have much of an impact on air distribution, but that in fact is not true. And, and now we can see how we could use return locations to improve, not just 
we don't want to return near a ceiling supply and, and pull in air and short circuit, but how we can improve the air distribution. So that's that's one thing that you only get from CFD. Uh, that's really powerful. That That's why I'm, I'm getting away from these ADPI tables and the hand counts, the way I've always been doing things in, in the past. Um, but then also um, when you look at your conference room and, and you know, sometimes you can't center that ceiling diffuser. You know, uh, uh, sometimes the light's in the center and you have to do two. Um, or maybe the client thinks two is better. I get that a lot too is, you know, oh, two is better. But if we could do one and do a smaller one, we save the client over a thousand bucks. And here we could show them. And when they see this or when we know this and, and, and we could always share what we know with other people. I mean, when you're saving, when there's multiple conference rooms in a big building, you're saving people thousands and thousands, and I'm talking US dollars, the thousand dollars for every supply. Trust me, you could justify the rates that you uh, charge as an engineer, as an engineering firm on a design. Um, but hey, if, if people want to, and the lighting works as such, we do two smaller diffusers, absolutely. And we're not dumping air on people. And so, so you know, this just sort of blows, you know, the, the old assumptions and the, and the old tables out of the water. This is what's really great about this. I just, just wanted to mention those two and, and go back on that. So, and then back to your office, you know, I always like to tell people, you know, what's great about this office is you know, probably half the small commercial buildings are offices, you know, one person in it, 10 by 10 is like the average size office space. It's also an average size bedroom. So, I mean, this is, this applies to homes too. Anyway, that's what I, I think is really cool, um, you know, about this stuff. But yeah, you could see how now what we didn't know when we're off the tables and, and or the ADPI tables, they're of no, not much use depending on the BTU load per square foot, you know, okay, now I've got real information with the CFD. Um, so that's what's really wonderful about this. So anyway, that's I just wanted to throw in my 10 cents there. Uh, sorry. Thanks. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Tony. Those are like very uh, wonderful insights. Uh, right. Okay. Uh, so moving on, uh, what's next for the uh, audience here? So uh, you can, uh, we have a trial subscription. Uh, you can get started with the, with the trial subscription. Uh, it's for 90 days and you get 5,000 credit and uh, you can simulate 5,000 square feet of build space with that. So you can start with that. Uh, who are is, you know, early uh, adapters or adapters of the technology. So they can try out, uh, burn their hand and uh, try out the app themselves. And uh, for those uh, who are still, you know, thinking about uh, risk resistance or high, is it to use the start the app, uh, we have another announcement, uh, which is uh, we are throwing a campaign where you can submit your uh, HVAC or mechanical design layout, and our support team will create your project and get get back to you with the compliance report for free. So this is for the first uh, uh, the first layout or first project which you're submitting so you can write to us or contact us on info at the rate simulation up.com so just with few set of inputs and our uh, support team will get contact get in contact with you and to extract all the required information uh, details to start the simulation and uh, get back to you with the compliance report so uh, yes uh, grant well, thank you, Praveen, for that fantastic presentation on this amazing platform. Very cool and uh, great offer for that uh, software. The case studies also provided some valuable insights. And Tony, thanks for jumping in on those. You know, autonomous HVAC uh, CFD will definitely power HVAC designers expeditiously create compliant and efficient HVAC solutions. So thank you, guys. Now, we've got 10 or more Q&A questions coming up here, but we'd like to do a quick poll so if we can get the uh, tech guys in the background to get the poll up for us. And if you would please uh, jump in and give us your opinions, we would love to see that right about now. There you go. There it is. What are your main objectives of doing indoor CFD simulations? Let's see what we got up here. We got uh, all of the above. Leave it up for another 15 seconds or so. We got about half the people on. Thank you guys for participating in that. We really appreciate it.
Anybody else want to jump in on the poll there before we close it off? We've got about two thirds of the people on. It'd be nice to get uh, more participation if we got it. But uh, well, let's go ahead and jump into our questions. We got a whole bunch of them here, and as they came in, I'm not positive if they all are in the right order. But here we go. So first, I think is the uh, very good question: What are the prerequisites to run a simulation? Okay, uh, so I'll take this uh, question. So the prerequisite uh, for running the simulation using autonomous HVAC safety app is uh, your mechanical design. Uh, on like once it is ready, the sizing is done, and uh, you know, uh, you know, you, you want to explore how well you are going to distribute the condition space. So you are done with the mechanical design. You can right away uh, start from the scratch. Either you start from the two D layout. Or if you have a 3D model, so we also start supporting uh, the Revit models, uh, 3D models, so we can contact the support team. So that's that's the starting point. So these are the prerequisite. No other uh, CFD specific informations are required. So that's it. Purely the mechanical design is the start point. And and I, I want to make sure that I understood that this is all running on the internet in a browser. So is it is there any system demands on my computer, et cetera, in my office? Oh, okay, okay. Thanks, thanks for uh, bringing that. So, uh, from uh, from the system specification point of view, your normal uh, laptop uh, where your uh, Chrome or Chrome browser is installed, so that is sufficient <coughs> and, uh, with a decent internet connection is good enough to start. So, you don't need any specific uh, uh, system requirement or something. So, you can start. From there. Great stuff, uh, Praveen. I think this is coming to you also. Can we measure model and measure humidity in CFD situations? Then I got a follow up for you. Sure, sure, sure. So, so uh, it is possible, and uh, relative humidity is an important factor in the predicted mean mode also, along with the temperature and uh, air velocity. So, relative humidity plays an important role. Uh, thus, you know, uh, the CFD simulation does uh, simulate or calculates the relative humidity in this space, the distribution of uh, humidity. And uh, humans are, uh, right now, you know, humans are the main sources, uh, the latent heat of human. Uh, there are two parts for the heat load of humans, like occupants. So sensible load and the latent load, uh, latent uh, heat. So the latent heat is kind of, you know, converted into the humidity source uh, in the space. So. And, and if you have any food or any uh, appliances that have also adds a latent heat, that also you can specify it as a humidity source and uh, CFD simulation uh, takes care of the, it, it shows the humidity distribution in the space. Yes. Interesting. And then the follow-up question is, what's the approach taken to model the humidity? Uh, okay, I guess I kind of uh, uh, already explained it. Okay. So, uh, to model humidity, you need to specify the the source which is through the latent heat uh, of occupants so that is one part and the outdoor air uh, that is getting mixed with the return air so that brings in some uh, humidity level of uh, like humid humid air from the outside so that also goes into the calculation or uh, the boundary conditions of supply i think uh, uh praveen uh, he wanted to know whether it is model using species model or multiphase okay okay, okay. So, so in CFD, yeah, we are using uh, species transport uh, to model the humidity part. Yes. yes. Thanks. Uh, okay. Thank you. Uh, Tony, this is coming to you. How ADPI helps in real world problems? Uh, well, you know, before CFD, that was kind of the way on how we would sort of select or, or, or locate a diffuser the best we can, although it was very limited information. Um, and don't get me wrong, you know, it is a, it, it could still be used as a guide, right? Um, it, it's just, there's just so many more scenarios where you kind of find it, fall outside the box of the ADPI. But but if the, the question is, you know, how do I use the ADPI? Uh, there is an example in the chapter 58 applications, but you just need to know the what diffuser you're using, what type of diffuser, what the CFM is. You look that up in the manufacturer's table with the throw. The characteristic length is 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 the length of the is the distance uh, from the grill to the nearest wall. You take that character characteristic throw divided by the length. You've got say uh, 1.2 or 0 0.8, however that 
ratio works. You look in the table to see if you're within an acceptable ADPI range, 80% or more. Um, if you're outside the range, they're predicting you're not going to have good comfort. Uh, of course, again, it's very limited um, based on the, the BTU per square foot. Um, you, you know, uh, based on what you may even have from the manufacturer, in fact. But, um, you know, yes, I've been using ADPI in the past, but I, I, I would still have comfort issues. I, I, I would still find out, hey, there's air dumping on people uh, that I didn't intend for that to happen. You know, now I have a CFD tool to kind of see all this stuff. And, you know, maybe I'll start centering my uh, diffusers or maybe I could be a little bit off center. And it's not a big deal, uh, depending on the scenario uh, of what I'm in and who's controlling the reflected ceiling plan. So um, I, I probably didn't exactly answer your question, but in a way, I'm kind of saying, hey, I'm getting away from, you know, the characteristic throw and uh, for comfort criteria and the ADPI of the table. So I'm just sort of moving away from that. It's just kind of obsolete. And, and in many scenarios, it really doesn't apply. It's not a good predictor of comfort. It's not a standard 55 compliance. So there you go. Uh, this question is a little vague to me. It says, is it is it modeled using species model or multi-phase simulation? Okay, I, I think this is uh, the humidity part, I guess. Yeah, that, that was covered, I guess. Okay, can... skip that. Okay, yeah. can it capture effect glass facade in thermal comfort? Right, right. Uh, the effect of uh, glass facade uh, using shading coefficients, uh, we can consider that uh, the effect of it in, in the simulations. So, yes. Okay. Can the uh, software import a CAD file for simulation? Yes, uh, we are. Uh, we have started supporting the three D Revit model, so it's in the background. So, with uh, you can contact our support team, and they can help you uh, with that. So, in the app, uh, the uh, released version, uh, you can start with the two D sketch layout, and for if you have a CAD model or three D model already, then you can. Uh, contact our team and we'll help you out to import it in the app. Okay. Uh, I'm going to ask this one out of order because it's re related. Regarding the previous question, a standard mentions calculate pressure at 0 0.5 M from every assumed opening and pressure difference of max and minimum inside the room. Trying to understand this better. Uh, can, can you repeat the question? Uh, I, I... Regarding the previous question, and uh, because they're coming in out of order, I'm not sure which one we're talking about. Uh, a standard mentions calculating pressure at 0.5 M from every assumed opening and pressure difference of maximum and minimum inside the room, wanting to understand. Uh, Tony, uh, did you? I think, uh, I think the question, the original question was, uh, let me read that question. The original question was, uh, uh, does this software calculates UPCI uh, to assess pressure inside room if there are three more openings such as window, door, uh, want to understand concept of pressure differential uh, and global something? Uh, <laughs> that was one question. So I, I'm not, it's not very clear uh, the articulated question, but yeah. Uh, okay. Okay, maybe we can, you can write it that is in detail to the info. yes, yes. We'll yeah and you can always get to us at info at simulationhub.com if uh, you need more clarity um the cfc the cfd soft design for which terrain category area and can it be based on different terrain categories uh so the, we are taking uh locations into a consideration uh, so for the uh, weather uh, information, uh, we are uh, using uh, that as a uh, factoring, but we are not doing external uh, environmental modeling. So if th that is the one of the thing that you are looking for, uh, that's little, uh, I would say a bit vast in that sense, because uh, doing that will add a lot of computational load to a software. So right and now... Uh, we are uh, relying on uh, standard condition used by ASHRAE and then ISO. Uh, there are uh, standard lot of tables that are available. We are using those uh, for referring historical data. Right. Uh, That's interesting. The EPW files, the like Energy Plus Weather Data file, 
for yes. the outdoor conditions. Even we use the wind data, the historical uh, wind yeah. data for the heat loss coefficients or heat transfer coefficients from the out uh, exterior walls or glasses, uh, but yeah. not the complete terrain. Yeah, it's it's not required for the system level simulation. I guess that's what. Uh, and and and, I, and and as a low cal person, as as an HVAC designer, um, and there was a question about ground reflectance too. I believe from from the same gentleman. You know. From a load calc heat loss heat gain, you could always change these things and, and see your overall impact of heat loss heat gain. Well, one thing when it comes to new construction, actually knowing what the infiltration of the building, you know, the infiltration models of what you refer to, and I use them all the time, of course, they're really weak in being actual indicators of how the building is going to be, how tight the building is going to be. Um Construction could be way tighter than what these infiltration models are kind of predicting. Okay, so, so sometimes it's just kind of you, who knows w w what it's going to be in the reality of it, if, if that makes sense. And, and, and ground reflectance too. You know, you have a combination of concrete and grass and and gravel, and maybe you've got a lake property too. All these different ground reflectances all going on at the same time. You know, we we just typically stick with the standard ground reflectance and you know, in many of the models, and you know, kind of go on with our day. Keep in mind, many of these will. Windows, when there's light coming in, they're going to have blinds, you know, they're going to have tint, kind of reduces the impact of, uh, uh, reduces the effect of ground reflectance and stuff. Huh? Yes, I think there is an interesting question. Uh, where was the return location in first case? I think Praveen. Uh... <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah, I think for this, for this case one, right? So it's in yeah. the... Uh, at the right top corner. So that was the return location. Yeah, right. And in the second case? And in the second case, uh, we had two uh, configurations. One, the return locations are at the center. And uh, in the second case, we moved uh, the R, like where this yeah. is. So that we moved it to the uh, extreme end. Wherever we observed, uh, we observed the age of air was higher. So we moved. Return to towards that zone and then it cleared out the return all day. Yeah, this was a wonderful simulation because I was also looking at it and uh, it was really uh, opening up the mind. So, <laughs> thank you. Uh, let me see here if water vapor gets condensed in the space you are modeling, will it be considered in the CFD simulation? Uh, not as of now, but we are uh, working on that. Uh, in, in, it's in it's in the product roadmap, but not as of now. So we are uh, we're get, we're going to get there. All right. Can the CFD tool be utilized for a data center application? Okay. Uh, right now, it is more for the occupant comfort and uh, indoor air quality. <clears throat> Uh, although the engine is same, the the physics it solves and everything is same. The template is not you know directly uh, usable for uh, modeling a data center with cracks and rags. Uh, I cannot specify that as of now, but uh, it's an interesting. We can get in touch and to understand the requirement and you know how we can cater your uh, needs so we can get in touch. What terrain category is the software designed for? What terrain category? Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I, I, I didn't quite uh, clearly understand the question. Uh, maybe we can get like, into more. And, uh, is it mountainous versus a lake? I know, I, I'm guessing here. I, I don't know the... Uh... Oh, okay. Okay. Again, uh, going back to the same, it's, it's a part of the same previous question. Okay. So as uh, Tony mentioned, uh, we are using a standard ground reflectance. Uh, uh, which comes, you know, in in case of uh, comes in picture, in case of uh, solar ray tracing, uh, that's it. So it's not a particular, uh, you know, terrain type or anything. So it's it, I guess it's a suburban or city. I, I'm not sure. Like it's a standard ground reflectance value which we apply. Uh, Very in, good. In future, we can open it up uh, with the user also. Users can specify the ground reflectance based on the. Terrain category, maybe. So that's possible. 
Looks like we've got one more, and then I think we're pretty close to the top of the hour here. Any simulation for optimum comfort versus CDD slash HDD for energy efficiency verification? Oh, okay. Uh, so right now, uh, there is no direct you know, uh, energy consumption uh, data, but you can compare. For example, uh, in the case one, uh, you have uh, these values to compare. So both provides comfort. Uh, and now when you compare the energy consumption, I guess the energy consumption will be low for the first case. So based on the supply temperature. Uh, or in, in case of uh, VAV system, you can use CFM as a uh, pointer to understand the energy consumption. But soon we are bringing the energy consumption data all, also. So you can you know compare uh, uh, and select a dual objective kind of you know you need comfort without compromising or you need a low energy consumption without compromising the comfort or indoor air quality. Very good. Well, I think we've hit on most of our questions. Gentlemen, thank you. Uh, thank you to everyone for attending this webinar. And I hope the webinar was informative and provided you some insights on how autonomous HVAC CFD can help you assess building HVAC design for ASHRAE 55 compliance. Thank you again to our expert speakers today, Tony Amedio and Praveen Kumar. And as I mentioned earlier in the in this uh, session, the recording of this webinar will be available on our website and our YouTube channel. And you'll also get the link uh, in the, of the same thing in your emails. And don't forget that great offer for some free usage. I think it was for 90 days. Is that right, Praveen? Yes. yes. Very good. Well, thank you. There it is. Ah, oh, got it back up there. And free design compliance. All right. So thank you again for joining. And we hope to see you at our next webinar. Thank you all for attending yet again. Thank you.